Here we got a short little ditty here on the nerves of the distal thoracic limb. If you recall, we're looking at the palmar aspect of the carpus and metacarpus here. Remember our median nerve came down and it's going to branch into a medial palmar and a lateral palmar nerve. Okay, And then they're going to separate in the lateral palmar. It's going to go lateral, medial palmar, medial. They're going to run along the either side of the flexor tendons. Then remember the ulnar nerve came down. It gives off a dorsal branch, which comes around the lateral aspect of the carpus to the dorsal surface of the carpus metacarpus. And then the palmar branch. Remember that palmar branch comes over and joins that lateral palmar nerve. Okay, so most of that lateral palmar nerve then is going to be a combination of the median nerve and the ulnar nerve, whereas the medial palmar nerve is just the median nerve. Okay. So as I said, the palmar nerves are going to be palpable along the side of the flexor tendons. And then about mid-metacarpus, we're going to see a branch coming off the medial palmar and coursing over and joining the lateral palmar, and that is the communicating branch. Okay, that communicating branch, you can run your finger along the palmar aspect of those flexor tendons and sometimes feel it pop under your finger. Okay, now coming off that lateral palmar nerve, just distal to the carpus, is going to be the deep branch. Now we're going to be able to see the deep branch come off and kind of dive deep, but we're not going to be able to follow it much further than that. And it is going to then divide into a medial and a lateral palmar metacarpal nerve. Okay, these two nerves are going to be coursing on the axial surface of the splint bones. So just inside the splint bones. Okay, so we're not going to be likely to see them. We may see them when they come around the buttons of the splint and then course dorsally. Okay, and we'll pick up what they're going to innervate in a minute. Okay, but that deep branch itself is going to innervate the distal carpus, the suspensory ligament, and the distal check ligament. Okay, now let's pick up these nerves as we come across the fetlock and go down to the digit. So here we see the lateral palmar nerve. Remember it's a combination of the median and the ulnar coming down and the medial palmar nerve. Okay, so these palmar nerves are going to supply branches to the palmar pouch of the fetlock joint. Okay, also the flexor tendons. And then they're going to give off dorsal branches. So we're going to have a dorsal branch on both the medial and the lateral side. And there may be one, there may be multiple of these dorsal branches coming off. So as the name implies, they're going to course dorsally what they're going to innervate is the skin of the fetlock, um, the dorsal interphalangeal joints, and the dorsal coronary band and lamina of the hoof. Okay, So they're going to get a lot of our dorsal surface of the digit, even the hoof. Okay, so after they come off, we then have palmar digital nerves. Okay, so the continuation of our Palmar nerves are going to be palmar digital nerves after these dorsal branches come off. Okay, so what are these going to supply? So they're going to supply the palmar skin of the digit, palmar interphalangeal joints, the palmar chorea of the hoof and the wall, also the sole and the frog, innervate the digital cushion, the digital sesamoid ligaments, and the navicular bone. So they're going to basically get all the palmar structures of the digit. Okay. Now we mentioned the lateral and medial palmar metacarpal nerves. And we see here how they're coming around the buttons of the splint. Hopefully you are able to palpate those buttons of the splint. 
And what these guys are going to do after coursing around there, they are then going to supply the fetlock joint. So they're going to be the primary supply of the fetlock. Remember, just the palmar aspect, that palmar pouch, is going to be innervated by the palmar nerves. But most of the fetlock joint is going to be innervated by these palmar metacarpal nerves. So we need to make sure we block those if we want to get anesthesia to that whole fetlock joint. Okay? They're also going to do some of the dorsal skin of the digit, possibly the dorsal perioplic and coronary corium, mostly on the medial side. So they're going to do some of the hoof wall, but mostly on the medial side. Okay? So the big thing there is remember that these palmar metacarpal nerves are the primary supply to the fetlock joint. So if you're asked to do a neurectomy and cut one of these palmar digital nerves. You got to remember that we have down here the ligament of the ergot. Okay, it's going to be coursing right next to these palmar digital nerves and so if you cut that the animal will not go sound. <laughs> okay, so that's something to keep in mind. It's generally going to be shiny and it's coming off of the ergot and kind of coursing in that same direction kind of distal dorsally on the digit. Okay here's just a little bit from the canine. This will be helpful when we look at the bovine. Okay so in the canine the big thing is to notice that the superficial branches of the radial nerve are going to come down all the way down to the digits. And so they're going to get the primary aspect of the dorsal surface of the paw. We see that the lateral surface dorsally of the last digit as well as the palmar surface laterally of that last digit are picked up by the ulnar nerve. And then on the palmar surface we see an overlap of the median and ulnar nerve supplying that region. Okay. So as I said, this will be helpful here in the bovine. So in the bovine, you don't generally need to remember all those distal digital nerves because generally in the bovine, what you're going to do is a tourniquet to allow the veins to pop up and then you're going to inject those veins with anesthesia. Okay, and you'll do whichever veins you want to anesthetize whatever portions of the digit you need. Okay, that'll be important when we talk about the circulation to the digits. But as far as the innervation, what's helpful to remember is just like in the dog, the superficial radial is going to come down. Remember in the equine radial doesn't go past the carpus. Okay, so they also get both the abaxial and axial surface of dorsal digit 3 and the axial dorsal surface of 4. Okay. Then the median nerve branches of the median nerve are going to pick up the abaxial and axial surfaces palmarly of 3 as well as the palmar axial surface of 4. So just kind of the mirror opposite as the radial but on the palmar surface. So can you guess what the lateral surface is going to get a four? That's right, the ulnar nerve, the palmar branch will get the palmar surface. Dorsal branch will get the dorsal abaxial surface of four. Okay? So, you know, know what major nerves are supplying these regions as we have outlined here, but you don't need to know the specific branches of these nerves. Okay? Alright, I hope this was helpful to you.